Hi everyone, I'm Polly Plum, and in this video I am going to teach you how to make this pattern, Fairy Wings. It is a 12 inch afghan block. And let's see, what we need for this project is Aran weight yarn in assorted colors. I used Red Heart with Love and a 6 millimeter hook. Use as many colors as you want or as few as you want. Um, a needle and scissors for weaving in your ends. It wouldn't hurt to have a ruler around to check your gauge and check your final size. And then we're also going to need stitch markers. Okay, stitch markers are optional and I will talk about them when the time comes in the video. Um, but if you want to be ready, you either need 10 or you need 40 and that'll make a lot more sense later. You can also use some scraps of contrasting colored yarn if you have some of that available. All right, let's get started. All right, we are going to start with a double magic circle. If you don't like magic circles, that's fine. You can start with a chain loop, just chain four, make a loop and make your stitches into that instead. I like to use double magic circles. So what I'm gonna do is put the yarn in my hand like this, wrap it around a couple of my fingers twice then hold it in place. Insert my hook into those two circles and pull up a loop. It's kind of loose here, so I'm going to secure it while I get my working yarn ready. Then tighten it up and chain one to secure it. I like to pull that first chain a little bit tight and then chain two more to count as my first double crochet. This first double crochet is actually going to be part of a beginning popcorn stitch. So into my magic circles, I'm going to double crochet four more times. So with that beginning chain three, it counts as five double crochets. Now take my hook out of the loop, insert it into the top of the chain three, put the loop back on my hook and pull it through, tighten it up and there's my first popcorn. Now I'm going to chain three and make another popcorn. So five double crochets into my magic circle. Okay, five double crochets. Take my hook out and put it into the top two loops of the first of, of those five double crochets. Put it back, put the working loop back on my hook and pull it through. Tighten it up and there's my next popcorn. Chain three. And now I'm going to make another popcorn. I'm going to do this so I have a total of four popcorns. Okay, there's my third popcorn, chain three, and one more popcorn. And then chain three, and now I'm going to close my double magic circle. To do that, First, find the, uh, the loose end and sort of untwist it from the, uh, from the loops. There we go. Okay, there we go. <clears throat> then pull on the yarn end just a little bit, not all the way, just a little bit. We want to see which one of these loops tightens up first. So the one that got smaller is the one we want to start with. That's the one we want to tighten all the way first. So I'm going to pull it from the top and it will pull that other loop. And now I'll go back to my yarn end and close it up with that. And that is a really nice tight magic circle. Okay. And now I'm just going to slip stitch to that first popcorn to join. Um, don't worry too much about getting it exactly in that chain three that we started with. Just do your best is fine. Uh, fasten off. And 
And that is round one. Okay, so I demonstrated round one in a different color, but for my square, I actually wanted this white color in the center. It just won't show up very good on video, so I demonstrated in a color that would. Now I'm switching to the color that I want in the middle of my square, which is this off white color. And now let's get started on round two. So I'm starting with a new color. I am going to put that slip knot on my hook. And in any one of these chain three spaces is where we'll start. So normally I would start with a standing double crochet, but I actually really, really want to just slip stitch this time. Um, and that's because I'm going to show you my technique. Uh, you can find it on my website. I call it on my website, um, perfect double crochet circles, but this actually works for double crochet squares or any double crochet in the round. So I'm going to attach it with a slip knot and then chain just two. Normally we do a chain three for a double crochet, this chain two is going to count as the start of our first double crochet and we'll actually finish it up at the end. I'll show you how we do that. Um, if you don't want to do this, you can do it the traditional way. That's totally fine. But I thought I would take a moment to demonstrate what I do for a very nice looking double crochet in the round. So chain two and then another double crochet. And then chain two. And then I want you to put three double crochets into this chain space. And there is a reason for that. It's going to seem a little off at first, but this is going to make it so that all of our rounds start in the same place. Then double crochet into that popcorn stitch. You don't want to go around it. You don't want to do a post stitch, just into the top of it. And then in the next chain three space, we're going to three double crochets chain two, and three more double crochets. So you're going to have a total of seven double crochets on each side. And then double crochet into the popcorn, then into the next chain three space, three double crochets, chain two, three double crochets, And then, might not be the exact right place, but that's okay. I'm going to double crochet into this popcorn. And then again, last chain space, three double crochets, chain two, three double crochets, okay. Now, double crochet into that last popcorn. And now we're back at the beginning. We're going to put one double crochet into this chain three space where we started so that now we have three where we were supposed to in the beginning. And now all of our rounds are gonna start with um, two double crochets that look like this. So essentially we're just starting in the same place for each of the next few rounds, which is nice when you're using the same color, which um, I will be and I would encourage you to use the same color for the next few rounds. Okay, now, Back to my um, perfect double crochet circles or squares technique. What I do here to connect my, um, my round, I join by slip stitching not to the chain two that I made, but to the next stitch. And what that does is don't pull it real tight, just leave it the same size as the rest of the stitches. What that does is makes your slip stitch the top of the chain two and then when you work into it on the next round, that counts, that slip stitch counts as the top of, of that double crochet. And then I'm going to slip stitch into the next chain two space, and that slip stitch now becomes the top of this last double crochet of the side. So that is round two. And now let's go ahead and jump right into round three, because round three through six are all essentially exactly the same. We slip stitch into that corner, and now again, I'm going to chain only two and then double crochet into that corner, chain two, and then two double crochets in that same corner. And now I'm just going to go ahead and make a double crochet round all the way around. So double crochet in each stitch.
and then in the corner, two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet. So go ahead and do that all the way around back to the beginning. Okay, so when you get to the end of your round, you'll just double crochet into that slip stitch above the chain two, and then double crochet into the next slip stitch. Okay, and then to close off your round, again, you don't slip stitch to the chain two, you slip stitch to the double crochet right after it. And if you're done, you can fasten off here, or if you're moving on with the same color, as again, I am, um, slip stitch into the chain two space and repeat round three for round four and round five and round six. And then um, I will see you for round seven. If you want to check your gauge, round four is a good place to do that should be about five inches from side to side, up and down, about five inches square at round four. All right, let's take a moment to talk about stitch markers before we move on to round seven, because stitch markers can make round seven much, much easier. But you do have a few options, because I know not everybody likes to use them, and I will admit that every time I ask you to use stitch markers, I definitely have not used them. I just remember the stitch that I'm thinking of. So, you know, even I break that rule. Okay, so this time you might want to think about it. So I dutifully placed stitch markers in all the correct stitches um, that you'll need to for round seven. Now, if you're looking at the written pattern, I told you to do this for each round as you made it, or you can do it after you have them all around, all made. Um, one of the problems is to put them all in, you'll need 40 stitch markers, and I know not everybody has those available. So you have a couple options. First off, you can put them in just one of the sides, like I did. And as you make round seven, that's the only round you're really going to need the stitch markers. You can make round seven with the stitch markers on this side, then move them over to the next side, make round seven, and move them to the next side, make the next part of round seven, and move them to the last side and finish up. Um, that's one option. Another option is grab yourself a little piece of yarn um, like this. And I'm just going to pick a random stitch to mark. You can loop a little piece of yarn instead like this. So I pulled it through with the loop like that. I'm going to pull the ends through and um, that can mark a stitch too so that you can see it and then it comes off real easy like that. Um, that's a nice way to make stitch markers when you don't have enough or any available. Um, or you can trust me on this and just follow my instructions. So the stitch markers are the seventh stitch of round six, seventh and the seventh, eight, nine, twelve, 17th stitch. And then we've got one, two, three, four, five, the sixth stitch of round five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, and the 14th stitch of round five. And then one, two, three, four, the fifth stitch of round four, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 
and the 11th stitch of row four, one, two, three, for the fourth stitch of round three, that's the third and the eighth stitch of row three, and then the third and the fifth stitch of round two. So we'll just do that one stitch made into the popcorn in between them. So as you can see, each stitch is one forward and a row down. So it's really not hard to find the next stitch. And I think people who are like you using the video are actually going to have a much easier time with this because it's so much easier for me to show you than it was for me to write this into the pattern. So stitch markers became really important for the pattern. Um, but for the video, you, um, you might just be able to see it a lot better than people reading the written pattern. So it is up to you how you want to handle that. Um, but now you know your options. All right, time for round seven. This is where we get to start making our fairy wings. So I'm going to demonstrate how to do the first side with stitch markers and then the second side without stitch markers so that you can see how to do it both ways. We are going to start, um, doesn't matter if you're using stitch markers or not, we're going to start on the sixth double crochet of any side so one, two, three, four, five, six. If you are using stitch markers, that will put you at the double crochet immediately before a stitch marker. We're going to make a standing single crochet in that stitch. Okay, now chain one, and around the next stitch, so the very first stitch marker, make a front post single crochet, and make sure that you don't pull too tightly on your chain ones at all for uh, round seven through nine. So a front post single crochet around that double crochet. Now chain one again. Now move to the next double crochet with a stitch marker. So it'll be one double crochet ahead and one down. And make a front post single crochet around that. Okay, chain one. Keep them the chain ones loose but not too loose and then um okay and then around the next double crochet with a stitch marker make another front post single crochet you might even let your work uh, angle a little bit now chain one and same thing around the next double crochet with a stitch marker make a front post single crochet chain one and one more front post single crochet around the next double crochet with a stitch marker. So now we're at round two. We're going to chain one. Whew, okay, chain one. And now we're going to make a front post single crochet around the top of this popcorn. All you have to do to do that is stick your hook into this chain three space and then out the other one. Keep your yarn, oops. Keep your yarn above the popcorn. Don't let it come down around the popcorn. Keep it up above the pop, top of the popcorn and make a front post single crochet, okay? All right, there's the first half of our V that we're going to make. Now we're going to work up the other side. Let's chain one and instead of making a regular front post single crochet, we're going to make what I called a reverse front post single crochet. I, I just made up that term because I didn't have another name to call it. Um, essentially all we're doing is instead of making our front post single crochet by inserting our hook um, the way we normally do, we're going to go in from the other side of the double crochet. Okay, And this is easiest when you angle your work a little bit um, so that you can follow this line of stitch markers again. Okay, so under that double crochet from the opposite side that you usually go in, and a front post single crochet. Then again, chain one, and do another reverse post single crochet around the next double crochet with a stitch marker. Chain one, and then just keep doing that. Reverse front post single around the next marked double crochet. Chain one, reverse front post single crochet, on the next mark double crochet one more chain one reverse front post single crochet around that last marked double crochet and then chain one okay now looking at your square um, normally the way you normally would if you were just making a regular round 
we're going to work a single crochet into the very next stitch, so the one right after that last marked stitch, the very next double crochet, just a regular single crochet. Okay, so that's it. You survived the first bit of overlay in this square. Um, next part is simple. We're going to half double crochet in each of the next five stitches. Just a regular half double crochet. <clears throat> okay, now into the corner, make two half double crochets. And now we're going to pico, and I do my picos a little bit differently than what you might be used to seeing. So let me show you how to, I do them. Um, it does give you a slightly different shape. I do chain three, and then find that very first chain and the back bump. So here, if you look at the top of the stitches, those are the top two loops. We want the back bump. We're going to slip stitch to that back bump. And what this does is it gives you a really triangular pointy sort of sloping pico instead of um, like a bobbly type of pico. Okay, after that, two more half double crochets into the corner. Okay, and then my yarn is really tangly tonight. Okay, and then um, a half double crochet in each of the next five stitches. Two. Three, four, and five. <clears throat> then single crochet in the next stitch. Now, if you want, you can move your stitch markers. Um, this is where you'll need them again. Or um, follow along with me as I do this without stitch markers, okay? So, chain one, and into the very next double crochet, uh, front post single crochet chain one and now you're going to look at the next double crochet and just go one round below it and front post single crochet around that then chain one same thing again next double crochet one round below front post single crochet around that one chain one next double crochet one round down front post single crochet around that one chain one Next double crochet, one round down, front post single crochet around that. And if you were to go to, then chain one, if you were to go to the next double crochet and one round down, it would be the, the popcorn. So let's front post single crochet around the popcorn, chain one, and now we're going to work our reverse front post single crochets the same way up the square. So there's the stitch. There's the double crochet made into the popcorn, so we're gonna go up one round and over one double crochet. Oops, I did it the wrong way. And we're going in the opposite direction because we're making reverse single front post single crochets. Then chain one, okay. Go up one round and over one double crochet. Reverse front post single, chain one. I go up one round over one. And reverse front post single, chain one, up one round, over one double, front post single, reverse front post single, chain one, up one round, over one double, reverse front post single, chain one, and then the double crochet immediately after the last one we worked around, make a regular single crochet into that. Now is a good time to make sure that you have one, two, three, four, five double crochets left so that you know you're at the right spot. You got all of your um, front post stitches into the right spots. And then just go ahead and make your half double crochets again. One, two, three, four, five, and then two in the corner, and then pico. One, two, three chains and then slip stitch to the back bump. Then two half double crochets, two and then five into the double crochets. One, two, three, four, five. And we are right back where we started. 
um, where we would do a single crochet into the next double crochet and go ahead and repeat that two more times so if you want move your stitch markers again or follow along like I did without stitch markers and then slip stitch to join or use an invisible join if you like doing that and then we will do round eight together Now in round eight, we are essentially just going to echo this exact same shape that we made in round seven. Um, what we're going to do is, on any side, find the first double crochet that has a front post single crochet around it. Um, this was one of the marked ones. If you haven't yet, you can take your stitch markers out or leave them in. It really doesn't matter um, because now we're going to reference the stitches with the front post single crochets in them. So the first one immediately after the double crochet that has the single crochet in it is the one that has a front post single crochet around it. Into the top two loops of that is where we're going to put our standing single crochet. Now we're going to, like I said, echo that shape of the V. We're going to chain one and front post single crochet around the very next double crochet. And then chain one and now we're going to move down. So again, it'll be one stitch forward, one row down, or you can just look for the double crochet just to the inside of that double crochet with the front post single around it. And then chain one and do the same thing for the next one. One row down, the double crochet just on the inside of the next front post single. Make a front post single around that and then chain one. Same thing, the next one just on the inside front post single, chain one. Now the next one can be kind of hard to find because it is tucked between this front post single and this reverse front post single. Um, you might need to push the, the front post single crochet that's around the popcorn. I need to push that kind of down out of the way to find the one at the very bottom. And then make a front post single crochet around that one. And then chain one. And now we'll work right back up the other side. <clears throat> so reverse front post single crochet around the, um, the next double crochet one round up and just to the inside of that other reverse front post single. Make a reverse front post single around it, chain one, again one row up just on the inside of that reverse front post single. Make your reverse front post single and then chain one couple more times, <clears throat> one round up, and make a reverse front post single around that double crochet just on the inside, chain one, and one last time, and then chain one, and now find the next double crochet is the one that has the reverse front post single around it. Into the top two loops of that stitch, we're going to make a regular single crochet. Okay, Whew. Okay. now chain one. <clears throat> this is a little different. We are going to put a chain one after that single crochet in this round. Now what we're going to do is find the next half double crochet. So skip the single crochet that's made into the top of the double crochet, the regular single crochet. Skip that one. Find the next half double crochet and we're going to work into the third loop. Okay. This is not as scary as it sounds. If you've never done this before, um, doing it on a half double crochet is the easiest way to learn. So the third loop is not either of these top two loops, the loops that you normally work into. It's the one right behind them. So bend your stitch forward and find the loop. It's much easier to find on a half double crochet. Find the loop just behind the back loop, okay? And make a half double crochet into that loop. And what this is going to do is just push the top two loops of your stitch forward and give you a really nice texture and a really clean line. All right, so now we're going to make a half double crochet in the third loop of each half double crochet, uh, each of the next six half double crochets total. So one, two, three, four, five, and six six. There we go. Um, and you can be a little bit gentle with that third loop. It can stretch out kind of easily, so don't pull too hard. Okay, into the last half double crochet, we're going to make two half double crochets into the third loop. 
one and two. All right, now just completely skip that pico. We're going to let it stick up and give us some interesting texture. Let's make another pico, one, two, three chains, and slip stitch to the back loop of the first chain. Okay, skip that pico, and into the next half double crochet, into the third loop, make two double crochets. One and two. Okay, now into each of the next six half double crochets, we're going to make a half double crochet into the third loop. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. Now chain one and skip the regular single crochet that comes next and into the next double crochet of round six, the one with the front post single around it, make a just a regular single crochet. And this is right back where we started. So let's go through that one more time together. If you need to follow along, we're going to chain one and front post single crochet around the next double crochet. Then chain one. And now we're going to do the double crochet one stitch ahead, one round below, the one right next to that front post single crochet. So front post single crochet around it and then chain one. Again, front post single crochet around the next one just to the inside of those other front post single crochets. Chain one, another one, front post single, chain one, and now find the one at the bottom. Kind of might need to dig around a little bit. Front post single crochet around the one at the bottom chain one and now let's do our reverse front post single crochets all the way up on that double crochet the one just to the inside then chain one reverse front post single chain one reverse front post single chain one reverse front post single chain one okay now into the next double crochet make a regular single crochet chain one Find the next half double crochet right after the single. Find the next half double crochet around seven and make a half double crochet into the, ch the third loop. Do that six times. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And the corner into the next half double crochet, make two half double crochets into the third loop. Oh, I got a, a thread that I wasn't supposed to grab. There we go. And then a pico, one, two, three chains, slip stitch to the back bump. Skip the round seven pico into the third loop of the next half double crochet. That first one can be a little bit tricky to find. Okay, there it is one and two half double crochets into the third loop of that first half double after the pico and then six half double crochets into the third loop one two three four five and six then chain one and that is the end of our pattern You'll single crochet to that double crochet with the uh, front post single in it to start the pattern over again. So go ahead and do that on the next two sides. Slip stitch to join or invisible join if you like to do that. And then we'll do round nine together. Okay, round nine is almost exactly like round eight, uh, just with slightly different stitch counts. So I am going to just show you on one corner how this goes because I know you can do it. So pick any side with some new yarn. And again, we're going to find the double crochet that has that round eight front post single crochet around it right after the round eight regular single crochet. I'm going to make a standing single crochet into that round six double crochet with the round eight front post single crochet around it. Then chain one, and again, we're going to make our front post single crochet around the next double crochet. Chain one, and then work, working down the V, 
front post single crochet on that next double crochet to the inside, chain one, front post single crochet around the next double crochet to the inside, chain one, and then the one at the very bottom, front post single crochet around that one, chain one, and we're going to work up the other side with reverse front post single crochets, chain one, reverse front post single crochet, chain one, reverse front post single, all on the double crochet immediately to the inside of the round A1. Then chain one and double crochet in the next round six double crochet that has the round eight front post single in it. Okay, now this time we're going to chain two and skip the round eight single, skip the round eight chain one and into the third loop of that very next round eight half double crochet into the third loop we make a single half I'm sorry we make a half double crochet <laughs> then we're going to make um, six more half double crochets into the third loop total of seven so one two three four five six seven and then into that last half double before the pico into the third loop we make two half double crochets okay then pico one two three chains slip stitch to the back bump skip the round eight pico and into the next round eight half double crochets into the third loop we make two half double crochets okay and now seven half double crochets into the third loop one two, three, four, five, six, and seven, and then we'll chain two, and that is brings us right back to the single crochet where we started with. So we'll skip the chain one of round eight, we'll skip the single crochet of round eight, and into the round six double crochet right after that, the one with the front post single crochet is where we put our next single crochet. And then you just go ahead and repeat that pattern around for the next three corners, okay? Okay, before we start round 10, you might notice that your, your piece of crochet doesn't really wanna lay flat. That's okay, it's going to straighten out as we work on it and add some more rounds to it. So for round 10, what I want you to do is pick any side with new yarn. We're going to start on this wing over here. I want you to find the first half double crochet after the chain two space and make a standing single crochet into the third loop. Don't worry, this is the last round we'll be using the third loop. Now I want you to stick a single crochet into the third loop of each of the next eight half double crochets. So a total of nine single crochets. So there's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Brings us to the pico. Again, we're going to skip the pico. The picos are just gonna um, stick up a little bit like this to give us the um, fancy tips of our fairy wings. So then chain three. One, two, three skip the pico and into the third loop of the next half double crochet make a single crochet and go ahead and do that for each of the next um, total of nine half double crochets two three four five six seven eight and nine okay uh, now skip the the chain two and the single crochet of round nine. What we're going to do is chain six, one, two, three, four, five, six, and find the very middle stitch of round six, that middle double crochet. Into that double crochet, we're going to make a popcorn. So if you remember, it's five double crochets all into that one stitch. Oh, got a little bit tangled. Let me try that over again. Five double crochets. One, two, three, four, 
five, take your hook out of the working loop of yarn, insert it into the first of the double crochets, put the loop back on and pull it through. And there's your popcorn. Now chain six, one, two, three, four, five, six. And then we're going to skip all of this up to this next half double crochet of round nine. And let's do that again. Into the third loop only, single crochet um, of each of those nine half double crochets. That's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Then chain one, two, three, skip the pico. And again, nine single crochets into the third loop only of the half double crochets. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, chain six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, skip everything until the middle of round six and make a peek of, um, a popcorn into that middle stitch of round six. So five double crochets. One, two, three, four, and five. And then pull that loop through to make our popcorn. Chain six, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then we just start right back over. So go ahead and do that all the way around. And you can slip stitch to join or um, invisible join if you want. I usually just do a slip stitch to join this round because it doesn't really show later. All right, for round 11, we're going to start in the very first single crochet after a chain six space. So this one right here. Um, if you're using the same color, just chain one and single crochet in that same single crochet where you joined. Um, I'm using a new color, so I'm going to make a standing single crochet and then single crochet in each single crochet across to the corner chain three space. It's a total of nine single crochets. When you get to the chain three space, we're going to make two single crochets into the chain three space, and then chain two, and two more single crochets. And now again, just single crochet in each stitch until the chain six space. So a total of nine single crochets again. Okay, when you get here, chain one. And now we're going to make a treble. So I'm going to yarn over twice to get ready and then find the stitch. We're going to find the round six double crochet that has the round nine front post single crochet in it. That one right there. And into that stitch, watch out that you don't get the um, chain six space. Into that stitch, we're going to make a treble. And then we're going to make a chain three and another treble into the same stitch. Okay. <clears throat> now around the popcorn, just ignore the chain six space. We'll pick that up later. Around the popcorn, just getting the very top, make a front post single crochet. Now we're going to make another treble into the next round six double crochet that has the reverse front post single crochet in it. So you can see there's two unworked double crochets on either side of the popcorn. So that's how you know you got the right stitch. Then chain three and another treble into that same stitch. And then chain one and you're back where you started. 
Okay, so go ahead and do that on each of the four sides and slip stitch to join and then I'll see you for round 12. Before we get started on round 12, now's a good time to measure your square. So grab a ruler or a tape measure, um, kind of just stretch your square out a little bit with your hands to get it to lay as straight as possible. And then measure, I like to measure right about here. I'm at about 11 inches in the middle, a little less, but that will block out down here, 11 inches. Okay, and then I like to turn and just double check So I'm pretty close to 11 inches square. This is like 10 and 3 quarters, so that'll that'll block out. Um, so what that means is I can consider round 12 and round 13. Um, round 12 and 13 are both rounds of single crochet, so they're not going to give me too much size. Um, but I do expect to get at least about half an inch out of each of them. So I'm going to stick to single crochet for both of those rounds. If your square is much larger than mine, what you can do is leave off round 13 entirely. Um, you, If your square is a lot smaller, you can change the rounds to either half double crochet or double crochet. Um, if you change them to half double crochet, make a half double crochet, chain two, half double crochet in the corner. If you change either of them to double crochet, make the corners two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet. Um, so let's go ahead and put a round of single crochet on my square. We're going to start in the same place. just want to make sure I'm not starting by any of my joins. Okay. <clears throat> We're going to start in the same place as the last couple rounds. So the stitch right after the chain one space. If you're using the same color, again, just go ahead and chain one and then single crochet in that same stitch. Uh, standing single crochet in that stitch with a new color. And then single crochet in each of the next 10 stitches. It'll be a total of 11 single crochets before the corner. And then into the corner make single crochet, chain 2, single crochet. And then again, we're just going to single crochet in the next 11 single crochets. Okay. When you get to the chain one space, what I want you to do is not work just into the chain one, but I want you to also pick up the chain six that's right behind it. And just so go under both of those and make a single crochet. Then into the next treble, again, don't just work into the treble, work into the top two loops of the treble and go under the chain six space and make a single crochet. And then into the chain three space and the chain six space together, make three single crochets. One, two, three. Okay, and then into the next treble. In the written instructions, I say to get the treble and the chain six space, but uh, later I realized it's it's really not necessary. Just So just go ahead and make a single crochet into the treble. Um, it won't make a difference. And then single crochet into the front post single crochet that is around the popcorn, and then single crochet into the next treble. Um, I actually found that makes the side of your square lay a little straighter. Okay, so then into the chain three and the chain six space, make three single crochets. Try not to bunch them up either. You want them kind of spread out. If they do get bunched up, go ahead and just sort of move them into place if you can. Mine doesn't really want to move. There we go. That will also help keep your edge straight instead of wobbly. Okay, then into the treble while also picking up the chain six space, single crochet, and then into the chain one and the chain six space, single crochet. Okay, and then we're right back where we started and we just go ahead and single crochet into the single crochets. So go ahead and do that on the next three sides and then I'll see you for round 13. 
So round 13, again, is optional for size. Um, I'm actually quite happy with the size of my square, but I will show you just what to do real fast. And again, if you need to, you can change this to half double crochets or double crochets. Start anywhere you want. Um, on any side, any stitch really is fine with a single crochet or if you're again if you're using the same color just chain one and single crochet in the same stitch as the join and just single crochet or half double or double crochet in each stitch across to the corner and then in the corner you'll make single crochet chain two single crochet um, if you're doing half double crochet, you'll do half double crochet, chain two, half double crochet. If you're doing double crochets, make it two double crochets, chain two, two double crochets. You need a little bit more for that um, in the corner so that it doesn't get round, it stays pointy. Okay, that's all you have to do for round 13 if you're using it, again, totally optional. Uh, before I let you go, one more tip. If your square seems a little bit wobbly, like it doesn't want to lay flat, just go ahead and give it a nice light stretching out. Um, blocking is great if you like to block, um, but also let it rest. Give it, give it a night to rest if it really just doesn't want to lay flat. I found with this pattern that if I just let it rest overnight, uh, the next day it was much more willing to relax into shape. So um, before you get worried that yours is too wobbly, just let it rest. So that's it for the Fairy Wings pattern. Thank you so much for coming along with me on this adventure, and I hope you love what you made. Have a great day.